What's up kids, today I want to discuss some of your ideas and my ideas for the next world box updates. Note, not all of these updates are physically and technically possible, but they are still quite fun to come up with. I want to thank all of the people which commented some of their ideas, and in this video I'll be reading out some of them. Of course, before we get into the video, may I offer you guys a subscription? You subscribe, it supports me to make more content for you. A thumbs up does the same. Let's just get on with the video. Before I can comment it down, we need coral after we use the flower seed. I think the addition of this feature would be really cool and would make the ocean look way better. But at the same time, World Box is a 2D game, so it would be quite difficult to implement the change in a way that the player is aware that it's not land. For instance, if we add current to the game, I don't really know how it would work. I don't think it belongs in the World Box. It would be definitely mistaking for the new candy biome. But something which would definitely be cool in the game is the addition of sea monsters. Sharks wouldn't be a bad idea either. We do have crabs, turtles, and those are the only ones I see. I never see crocodiles in the game. Or piranhas. I always have to spawn them in. So I think if we ever receive the update which adds more to the ocean, not necessarily coral because I just don't really see a way it can work out since World Box is a 2D game. But let's say more sea creatures. I think those will be very cool additions to the ocean. Another idea by Sheep Builder. The ability for battles to be more organized. Example, not everyone rushing at each other. I completely agree with you on this one. I think if the division sort of planned out their attack, for example, few of them stand back and let the trip with higher stats attack first, and the enemy side also does the same. So basically at the very beginning it's a fight between all of the strongest warriors, that then once they stop fighting, the weaker ones attack. Oh, imagine they lined up in a triangular formation. That would be probably one of the coolest things man could witness inside of world box. I sort of see how this may be quite difficult to program, since often there are many wars going on at the same time, but, but it's something I would sort of see possible inside of world box. I can't quite pronounce his name, but this is another idea. I think there should be an ability to play as humans or other creatures, like taking control of them. That would be pretty cool, I think. I'm pretty sure a mod exists or was available for a previous version of the game, but honestly, I would love to have it in vanilla. But then at the very same time, if you play as one of the creatures inside of world box, the game doesn't have much to offer for creatures. World Box just isn't the most exciting game from a creature's point of view. All you can do is stand there itching your ass, waiting to get attacked by someone. I think if this was supposed to be an update, I don't think it should be like the main part of the update. It shouldn't be even the cherry on top, it should be like a little sprinkle, just a little addition. But yes, I do agree. I do see people enjoying this feature. And for recording Roblox films and cinematics, it would make our jobs way easier. By the way, I made one myself if you want to watch that. Another idea by name name. The ability to swim in shallow waters as far as 10 to 15 tiles, allowing them to cross short two tile river gaps. This change would remove the need to make a boat to cross rivers speeding up gameplay a little. Name name, you're a genius. You're an actual genius. You're a bloody genius. It would be a little extra feature. It would change the game so much because so many times I created a kingdom and like it was an island which had this tiny little river and none of the kingdoms wanted to expand because of the tiny river. It definitely made me tear up out of frustration. I think the little features are the most important in every single update. I think there are bigger game changers than what the main update is usually about. I also have some of my own ideas. One being the addition of a weather system into the game. I do know we have clouds but I don't want to drizzle my men with a few drops of water. I would love to see actual big storms in the game which would target specific parts of the map and some may occur more in certain biomes in the game. These may be desert storms, snow storms, and much more weather types you can think of. And something which would be very cool is being able to change the temperature of a region forever. As of now in the game, we can of course decrease the temperature, but it's not really decreasing any temperature, it's just basically creating snow. It doesn't really do anything. And of course, once the snow melts, it doesn't come back, so it doesn't really make sense. And let's just say we made an area very cold. It would receive constant snowfall, for example, that would be a very cool feature. <laughs> Instead of it being the casual snowfall you receive in front of your doorstep in December. This is sort of my Photoshop example how the weather system would work. By the way, in no shape or form, I'm a game developer. I am aware that there are limits to every single game, but it just doesn't stop me from getting these ideas. Another idea I have, which is quite similar, is the addition of seasons in World Box. I think biomes like plains should receive snowfall in winter, which later melts away in the summer. And the colder areas should gain even more snow and details to express the freezing temperatures. Of course, the years in World Box are pretty fast. If you think about it, it would be a flashing white screen. If every single year was supposed to go through a few seasons, it would just be a seizure or a fever dream. I think there should be a setting to let you choose how often you want seasons to rotate. Let's just say a season is going to rotate every 10 years. You get to choose. It would also be cool if the kingdom celebrated things like Christmas, like in the winter seasons you would just see a Christmas tree go up, in my opinion that would be quite cool. You, you sort of get the gist of this. Another idea I have is the addition of more military equipment. 
We, we already had Sheep Builder saying that he wants the battles to be more organized. And to be honest, that's true. They do, they just don't really kill. It's just a bunch of NPCs bashing into each other. Try to imagine during a fight, armies have a catapult, launching rocks to deal splash damage to enemies. We could have another catapult which launches fireballs, which set fire to the battlefield, and one which launches bomb, which obviously blows things up. You can come up with more ideas yourself, but this would definitely enhance the war experience and make you actually want to spectate the war instead of watching a war just to know who's winning. Another idea I have are vehicles. Of course, I'm not on about cars, planes, cyber trucks, but instead maybe some horses, some carriages, maybe even a hot air balloon if you want to get crazy, depending on how high you are. I think since we have ships in the game, we do deserve more ways our kingdoms can transport their items and travel. Of course, this isn't GTA or Minecraft. The world box map, even even on Iceberg is very very small, and in reality these methods aren't even necessary since the map is very very small. Okay, but listen up, what would you rather see? A character walking from one side of the map to another, or a character moving in a carriage or in the back of a stallion? I would think the answer is pretty clear. Another idea I have is introduction to politics. I'm not entirely sure how this could possibly work out. In summary, all of the rebellions are caused by groups, either ran by the villages, or by the village leader. Hello, it's Papi from the future here. Your boy is back. I just feel like I should add some extra information here, which I don't think I've described well previously. I would like the rebellions to be caused by groups run by ambitious wannabe leaders or by the village's leader themselves. I think it should be aware to us to see upcoming rebellion groups and how many supporters they consist of. In other words, we will be able to seek in on the villagers' political view in any given city. I think it would be a way better alternative to what we currently have, that once the entire city rebels, everyone within it becomes a part of the new kingdom. Imagine once there was a rebellion, the people who weren't supporting the new leader rallied against him or just moved out to another city which was a part of their original kingdom, or even became a group trying to cause a rebellion in favor of their original kingdom. I, I just think we should have more features depending on the type of king the kingdom has. It could be possibly an impact on the kingdom's economy. But I'm pretty sure the future updates are going to be somewhat working towards that direction. And also Worldbox does have an amazing modding community, which I'm pretty sure it will provide us with some mods we can't play Worldbox without. Some mods are just that good. But for today kids, this is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, drop a like, join the Children of Papi, my Discord server. And for today, my kids, this will be it. Goodbye.